What is your opinion on Facebook and Twitter and, and other social media platforms being kind of drug against their will into the fact checking business and trying to uh, figure out what to leave up and what to pull down? Uh, where does that help and where does it hurt? Yeah, I mean, they have a really Herculean task ahead of them uh, because, you know, what, what people need to remember about the origin stories about most of these social media platforms. What were they designed to do? They were designed to hyperconnect people to give them more of what they want, um, whether it's to share photos or videos or to like each other's things or to cheer each other on or join different groups, whatever it is. It's to hyperconnect everybody and the platforms are free. Mm -hmm. So we're the, all the products for sale. How, and then how do they also make money? By selling ads, it's ad revenue. How do they convince people to buy ads? They show them engagement. Mm -hmm. What garners the most engagement? Well, studies mm -hmm. have proven it's actually the arguments that take place on these social media platforms for and against different topics, right? So that's really where the engagement typically happens. And you've got influencers, right, on each of these platforms. So the the business model is not to have a bouncer at the door that when somebody sets up a news organization, sets up a persona that they say, hold on a second, I'm going to need two forms of ID <laughs> or you know, I'm going to need to treat you like I'm an airport checkpoint security guard and I'm not going to let you even put your bag on the conveyor belt. It, this is, you know, before I see you have a ticket, and that you've got a valid government ID. Nobody does that, right? It's about getting as many people on the platform as possible and get everybody connected and sharing things, engagement so I can sell ads and that's how they make money. Now we're saying to them, hey, 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 you've got all these fake personas, fake news organizations, misinformation campaigns. You need to flag those and take those down. That doesn't fit the business model. Mm -hmm. That's not how the business model works. And so they have a Herculean task ahead. It's much easier like pol politicians to say, hey, what they just posted is misinformation. But how about somebody that looks like Grandma Betty in Iowa? And, uh, how do they know if that's Grandma Betty or if it's right. some person pretending to be Grandma Betty or freedom of speech? Or is it a Russian operative? How are they supposed to know that? So they've got a really difficult task. And by the way, the revenue model fights against slowing down people being on the platform and posting things. Yeah. And, and the, the thing that I've noticed recently with with them stepping up and removing content, um, and I don't think that there, there's a, a right answer for this because there's definitely dangerous content and inappropriate content that that they may feel a duty to take down, or if they if they don't, then we might tell them later on that they had a duty to take it down. But when they do, for people that are suffering from confirmation bias already, it spins up the conspiracy even more because now the people you know, in the dark shadows are pulling this down because they don't want you to see it. It's that important. Yeah, I mean, it, you hear on both sides, hey, conservative voices are being silenced yeah. or liberal voices are being silenced. And it's like, guys, you know, maybe once in a while you've got a human that's in charge of curation that has a bias, but just it's like everybody calm down and we <laughs> have to, you know, assume they're working against a business model here and they're doing the best they can. I was very encouraged, actually, to see that there's discussion now by Facebook to have a blackout on political ads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the week uh, before the election, right? The week before yeah. the election. And you know, I, I think there a lot of good can come from that. So I, there's more that needs to be done. Actually, one, one of the gold standards I, I talk about in the book is uh, the French elections. So people may, may or may not recall, uh, you had Marie Le Pen running against Macron. Uh, and what was interesting was, is there was a, a, a hack of Macron's campaign. That's, there was a legitimate hack. But what ended up happening was Russian cyber operatives, we now know, uh, they actually took legitimate things from that and then they created deep fake forgeries mm -hmm. and then started to accuse Macron of having offshore accounts and where did the money come from? 
And this was all in the days and weeks leading to the French elections. And people would say, well, why would they care? Why, why would they? Well, because Marie Le Pen uh, was much more of a sympathizer to, you know, kind of what Russia was doing. Uh, and so what's interesting is, is the French government has a law that in a certain time frame leading to an election, new revelations about a candidate running for office are not allowed to run in the media. Mm. And so they, they, have, they have a law where there is a blackout. You cannot say, we just learned this terrible thing about this other person. So that, that whole like smear campaign type of tactic, you cannot do that um, in sort of a certain time frame leading up to the election. And as we all know, it was proven to be that these were deep fake forgeries and there was no such thing going on. Could you imagine had that information been presented by the media who would necessarily you know, want to run the story, what that could have done to the election and then it's too late. Like, how do you, what do you do? And so, you know, it, it's interesting. And I think that they really sort of set a great standard there. And, you know, in the future, I think we're going to have to do a lot more around ads. I'm seeing a lot of cool, creative things going on right now. I just saw that on Animal Crossing, <laughs> you can actually buy a Biden Harris sign. I say bravo to them. Why not? I mean, if you can do concerts on Fortnite, uh, why can't you have, um, you know, kind of, a, you know, our, our signs that we normally would have in the front yard, it's hard to come by these days because of the pandemic, you know, why not be where people are? And so they, they came up with that. But I think we've got a lot to be thinking about here around equal time, uh, around fairness and reporting, as well as like, how should these digital platforms be leveraged as it relates to not only political campaigns, but social issues that become part of political platforms. Mm. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Rosa, what do, you, what do you have? Well, I was thinking about back when I was in uh, what we called CAP, which was the analyst uh, training at the agency at the Sherman Kent School for Intelligence. And a big part of our curriculum as analysts was um, was about sourcing information. And that's a question I don't see nearly enough on social media is what's your source? Um, you know, and it, it doesn't take long to, to run a search on certain phrases to see where else they pop up. Is it coming from the Associated Press? Is it coming from a random news site that popped up a week ago? Um, so I was wondering, Teresa, if you could talk a bit about sourcing information and how we as a, a public can be, do a better job of that and where you Rosa, see- I'm so glad you asked that, that question. I always tell people it's the, um, it's the rule of three. Uh, and it takes longer to explain than it does to do, but I always tell people, if you see something that gives you a reaction to any social issue, not just politics, but any social issue, to frack or not to frack as far as it relates to our energy policy, to vaccinate or not to vaccinate as it relates to immunization, the flu, not just COVID-19, how you feel about COVID-19 and wearing a mask or not wearing a mask and some new scientific study. It's the rule of three, have a local source that you know vets the news, have a national source that you know vets the news have an international source that you know vets the news. And don't worry about political bias and bent. If you have a rule of three and you go local, national, international, chances are you're going to get the information that you seek. Now, if what you end up doing though is go you know, kind of local uh, with somebody who doesn't vet the news and then you go national with somebody who doesn't vet the news and then you go international with that, then you're just gonna be doing a rule of three for your confirmation bias, but really go to trusted vetted news sources. It could be a radio program, it could be a, a newspaper, it can be you know, a periodical, um, but that rule of three is very quick to check. And if you don't see that same information across the three, chances are you're a victim of a manipulation campaign, uh, at best a misinformation campaign at worst. 